Hey, what's up, Freedom Life Church family? What's up, everybody? Welcome to the pre-service show. It's a Friday night, Freedom Night. Yes. And we in the Lord's house. Yes, we are. Oh, it's so a good Friday to be here. night, and it's Freedom Night. What are you going for there? <laughs> it's a song, isn't it? I don't oh, know what the rest know. of the lyrics are. I have no idea. Um, Who knows? But hey, we're so glad that you guys are uh, joining with us, whether you're on Facebook, on YouTube, or just on our church website. Um, welcome to the online campus. Yes. What welcome. a great place to be on a Friday. You uh-huh. got nine minutes till service begins. If you live within a nine minute radius of church, or even you know a 15 what? minute you radius, you know, just get here. Head on over. Um, we got Freedom Night here. We got Johnny Jernigan in the house. Yes, I love Johnny. Man, there's just a hunger for tonight, hunger for God's presence. Mm-hmm. I'm a hunger for the Word, and yeah. we're just going to chase after the Lord That's tonight. Right. Expect the Holy Spirit to do some incredible things. Yeah. And uh, we're just going to take a couple minutes, kind of hang out a little bit. Yep. Talk about whatever comes to mind. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to kick it to church news in a couple minutes. So we don't really have, we don't really have to talk about upcoming events. Not really, but. Because that's going to be covered in the church news. So. True. Feels like fall today, right? It does. It's cold. Yeah. I just went to a soccer game, and uh, Peckway won. By the way, sorry, why I'm missing. Yeah. But no, it was it was freezing. It was so cold. All right, let's play a game. Um, okay. You have to say a word associated with fall, and we'll go back and forth to see until if we, can get we it. run out. Okay. All right. You want to go first? Leaves. Pumpkin. Apples. Football. Cider. Donuts. Patch. NFL. Scarf. <laughs> Windy. Ooh. Buffalo chicken dip. What's up, that? Okay. Buffalo chicken dip. Yeah. Um, sweaters. Boots. I got I'm out. I'm out. So let's say Sharpa. <laughs> Sherpa? What's a Sherpa? A Sherpa is like one of the jackets that you wear. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Very nice. It's but like it's a wool. fall, everybody. Feels, feels great outside. I know. Go ahead, comment on your favorite thing about fall. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Flannels, flannels and beards. Oh, I should have said flannels, man. And beanies. I, I brought flannels into Freedom Life a couple weeks ago. I, I. Oh, I thought you were gonna say like in general. You're no, I, I stepped into a Sunday a couple weeks ago wearing a flannel, and it wasn't really fall yet, but I was expecting. You ushered leaving. us into the presence of fall before yeah. we were ushered into hey, the presence of God. Let's bring Kyle in. Kyle. Kyle. Come here, bro. <laughs> oh, there's two Kyles. Oh, sorry, sorry. It more, be the more Kyle important, Kyle more show. important Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> no, we gotta be okay here. Stay in the middle. Everybody, if you don't know Kyle, this is Kyle Ham. He is uh, the worship leader at our uh, Lancaster County, I'm saying Coryville, our Lancaster County location. How's it going over at Lancaster County, man, with the worship team and all that? Like, actually, having to lead, I have to learn words. Instead of just. <laughs> Instead, just being, able, instead of just being able to fake it, so I'm yeah. super excited to just play guitar today. It's a different aspect. Of it. I don't oh, you're get to on the do today? Yeah, just nice play guitar. Back That's cool, line. bro. So be looking for Kyle in the service today. And if you go to Lancaster County campus, um, make sure you say hi to him on Sunday. Yes, yeah, 10 you o'clock. If you live in the Lancaster County area, you live around our campus over there, head over to that campus. If you play Come an on. instrument, call me. Yeah, join the worship team. No, don't do that. Hit it. My name's Briar. Uh, DM me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need to ask Kyle one more question before we get him sure. out. Um, Kyle. I don't have a question. For oh, you oh. Have a question? oh. Oh, go ahead. What is the perfect length for a nap? Ideal nap time. Like, like amount okay, of time. Okay, probably it's got to be at least an hour. I think uh, I'm like hour and 15 minutes. That's pretty sweet. I'm like 30 minutes. If it's longer than 30 minutes, you're too tired after. Yeah, but here's the here's the thing. I'm a parent now, so that's treasure that's time. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's me time. Yeah, you yeah. know what? You're right. Yeah. So what's happening with your kids while you take naps? I usually just leave them in a room by themselves, lock the door. All right, man. No, we'll, I'm just we'll get prayer for you at the altar about that tonight. <laughs> All right. This kid's got or, uh, your daughter goes to Freedom Academy. That's she right. loves it. Yeah. So. I'm so excited. All right. I Love gotta run. Bro. I gotta run, kids. You do that. See ya. What a guy. <laughs> Oh, I was going to say, oh, I can hear myself from the back room now. It's kind of weird. Um, but Brian Peterson told us exactly how to take the perfect length nap. He said you have to drink straight black coffee, no added sugar or creamer. And then you go take a nap, immediately take a nap. And then you let the caffeine naturally wake your body up. And then you are, like, ready to go. Uh, the more you know. 
I'm all about the 30 minute nap right there. Uh, 20 mine's to an 30 hour. minutes right in there. Mine's an hour. Gives the energy for the rest of the day. Um, well, hey, we got under five minutes until service. And so, um, hey, I'm just going to encourage you. Uh, what are you bleeding for tonight? Um, even if you need to take a couple minutes for it now, just get your heart ready yeah. for what God's going to do. And we're going to sing some worship songs. Get ready to sing with us. And I just pray that that uh, the same Holy Spirit that's here with us just begins to move wherever yeah. you're at, um, minister to your heart, and then prepare your heart for the Word tonight. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I'm really excited to hear from Johnny Jernigan and yeah. just the ministry time. Um, and uh, I'm preparing my heart for something tonight. You know, we can go through the motions so many times, just get caught up in the busyness and the yeah. ball going and going and going. Um, but what a time tonight just to kind of pause yeah. And to uh, get ready for what God's going to do. And starting to fill up in here. We got people yep. coming in. And we got people in the lobby right now. Um, and so once again, if you're nearby, come on over. <laughs> yeah, come hang out with us. It's yeah. going to be a good night. I love when Johnny's here because, number one, he always has the best stories. Yeah. Because he's an evangelist at heart. He loves to talk to people about Jesus. And to hear how bold he is um, yeah. when telling people about Jesus is amazing. It's inspiring. Um, and so make sure you are encouraged with that, but also like he loves to prophesy over people. And I love just seeing, um, you know, like put like not potential greatness, but like the anointing of the Holy Spirit, like called out on people. It's so cool. Yeah. So it's yeah. going to be good. It's going to be great. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. And a uh, few more seconds, one more minute. We're going to kick it to Chitch News. Chitch. And we're going to get rolling. You and, know, uh, I was just kind of distracted because the light caught your beard, and there's, like, a really, like, red hair right there. I do have some red in my beard. It only comes out in the fall, though. Oh. It's, like, the fall. It's the season. Uh, yo, tomorrow's my wedding month, everybody. Oh, my goodness. At the end of next month, I'm getting How married. How exciting. pretty exciting. And then after my wedding is women's conference. Yes. So... It's going to be good. Ladies, come out Women. and hang out with us. We have Sharon Kelly and Rachel Campbell and probably in the like house. Everything fall you could think of. Yes, Pop. everything. Lattes. After those party. Flannel designed scarves on hay bales. Okay. Probably stuff uh-huh. like that. You know, just, you know. I'd love to see you plan a women's conference oh, I, just to I, see I, what it'd be like. You would see. It would be amazing. Oh, my god. But don't worry about that right now, church, <laughs> because we're just going to focus on freedom night. And uh, we just really pray that you'd experience the freedom in life only God has to offer. Absolutely. We're praying for you. We love you. Let's go ahead and uh, dive into the service Church tonight. News. loving people, and loving life. Here are a few things that are coming up for you and your family. The updated small group listing is now live on the Freedom Life website. Easily access it through the app and sign up for a small group near you. Gatherings will begin the week of September 25th. We challenge you to step out of your comfort zone, expand your community of friends, and grow in your faith this fall. Freedom Life is hosting a fun-filled community event for the entire family at Gap Park on Saturday, October 15th. It's one of the best ways to make a difference in the fight against human trafficking. All proceeds from the 5K and Fun Run will benefit A21 and North Star Initiative. Families with children are especially welcome to the FL Kids Zone featuring inflatables and concessions and the festive trunk or treat beginning at 10.30 a.m. These activities are free and costumes are encouraged. Invite your family and friends and plan to join us. Ladies, we invite you to celebrate God's design of beauty through womanhood at the upcoming Flourish Conference. This year, we have two incredible speakers joining us, Pastor Sharon Kelly of Wave Church and Pastor Rachel Campbell of Flourishing Church. We believe it will be uplifting and inspiring as we come together to experience God's love and grace. Plus, there'll be lots of opportunity for girl time at the Friday after party and during the luncheon on Saturday. November 4th and 5th will be here soon. So don't wait, register online today. To learn more about events and opportunities at Freedom Life, visit our website, download the church app and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much for being here today.
your worship on a Friday night tonight. Come on. Here we go. Would you put your hands together? Here we go. Anybody ready to make some noise for the Lord tonight? Come on. Would you sing this out with me? Saturday was silent. Well, surely it was soon. But since when has it possible ever stopped you? And Friday's disappointment. And Sunday's empty too. Since when? Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Oh, oh, oh. Come on, this is the sound. 
This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Oh, this is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Yeah, this is the sound of dry bones rattling. something new you're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon oh, resurrection power rise in my veins too late I believe there's another miracle here in this room this is the sound of God on battle oh this is the praise make a dead Walk again. Walk in the grave. Walk 
Church, would you lift your voice as we sing this? Holy Spirit. so clearly you're the one above it all now all i want now all i want is to live to shine your glory you've awakened and restored me now i live to worship
sound of worship together we sing I sing on it I sing on to your name I sing glory to your name I sing praise I sing praise I sing on it to your name I sing glory to your name I sing praise come on we lift it up I sing praises, Lord, in all the honor to you. Come on. All the glory to you. We sing praises, Lord. I sing praises. Shout a praise to God tonight. Come on, with everything that's within you. Come on, He's worthy. He's holy. He's powerful. He's an awesome God. Come on, don't stop. Just let it build. Come on, He's worthy. We join with all the angels in heaven rejoicing. We love you, Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 6, it says, In the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, the prophet said, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. It's a little weird. Two wings, they covered their faces, and two, they covered their feet. 
And with two, they were flying around. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook. And the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then verse 6 says, Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with uh, tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. That's what Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago when he hung on a cross. And he died in our place, and he resurrected and he conquered death, hell, and the grave, and he conquered all sin so that we could be completely set free. Aren't you thankful tonight? Come on, aren't you thankful tonight? And then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. The reason that we're having this gathering tonight, everybody online, everybody in the house, in uh, an inopportune time, September, a little out of the ordinary for us. Everybody's busy, football games and all those things. I just felt like the Holy Spirit saying, it's harvest season. And so we, we need God to light a little fire on the inside of us. It's going to spread to the rest of the church. It's going to go through the community. It's harvesting. I mean, there's people that need to know that there's a God in heaven that loves them, that there's a Savior that came and died and took their place, that there's good news, and God can set them free. Come on, aren't you thankful tonight? Come on, aren't you thankful tonight? Let's just worship him all over the place. Let's just thank him that he's holy. He's holy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Come on, guys. Come on, with everything that's within you, let's declare it tonight. Let's thank him right now. Whether everything's going good in your life, whether life seems to be falling apart, he's still worthy. He's worthy of our praise. Come on, lift your hands to heaven all over this room. Just begin to thank God for his goodness. Every good and perfect gift comes from our heavenly father. God's been so good to you. He gave you breath. He gave you a family. And if your family's jacked up, he gave you a church family. And he loves you, and he's called you, and he's chosen you. He sent his son to die for you. He has purpose and destiny and and favor over your life. And all over this room tonight, we're just declaring, just like the prophet said thousands of years ago, Lord, here am I, send me. It's harvest season. Here am I, Lord, send me. I'll be the one. I'll share your name. I'll share your goodness. I'll share my testimony. I'll share about your power and your grace and mercy. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Come on, say it with me. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Come on, do it with me. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Come on, do it again. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Lord God, we offer ourselves to you. We all give you all of our praise. But, Lord, we give you our lives as a living sacrifice. Thank you so much for your presence. Thank you for your love for us. Come on, isn't God good? Come on, let's just thank him one more time. He's so good. 
There's nothing like the presence of God. I want to pray tonight for our uh, sister church in Southwest Florida. Um, So many of them are okay, but their entire communities are destroyed. It'll be years of recovery. Lord, we pray tonight for Pastor Bob and Stephanie. Lord, our brothers and sisters, church family, we have leaders down there, friends, family, so many lives. Lord, it's horrific. There's going to be so many casualties and destruction. People have lost so much. And Lord, I thank you that the church would arise in this season. And Lord God, out of the ashes, the beauty of the gospel and the good news of Jesus would birth a a revival and awakening in that region. Lord, that God, that would change generations. Lord, that they won't just talk about the storm. I remember that storm years ago when I was young. I remember that storm years ago and all that it did. But they'll talk about what, God, you did through your people because of that storm. So, Lord, we prophesy and declare that the enemy will not have the last word. But, Father, that you're moving by your spirit, that you'd strengthen your people, and that souls will be saved in Jesus' name. That the wind of God would blow stronger than the wind, Lord God, that blew in from that hurricane, and people would be saved, healed, and set free. We believe for that in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we invite you here tonight. We didn't come just to hear a nice message, to have a nice service and all all that stuff. We came to meet with you. We came to hear a word from heaven. We came to be filled with the Holy Ghost and power. We came to celebrate and to be set free. So I thank you that you're going to meet us at our level of faith tonight. You're going to meet us right where we are. And Lord, God, I thank you for your goodness. If you're joining us online right now, I want you to share the page because it's just going to show up in someone's feed. It's going to, it's going to be a heavenly algorithm. Someone's going to get saved online tonight just because you share that. Just be someone that shares, even if it's online. And in the house, get ready. God's about to do something in and through your life. Come on, everybody said? Come on, everybody said? Come on, let's thank God one more time for his goodness, for his grace, and his mercy. Well, Johnny Jernigan is uh, no stranger to Freedom Life, and he'll be no stranger in the future. We're excited to have him with us as we're doing a a special... uh, I wanted to bring him in. He'll be at our our Lancaster, Lancaster County campus on Sunday. Uh, and we'll have another friend of mine that'll be here. And I wanted him to come in uh, at, really, it's kind of, a, we don't normally do it like at this time in this way uh, because of everything going on. But I said, you know what, God, you're just going to appoint people and you're going to light some fires. You're going to light some fires. And so I just believe that tonight, if you'll just be open, that God's about to do something in your life, in your world. And he's going to use you this week in ways that, well, maybe you've never been used before. And it's going to be a powerful, powerful time. I so love and honor and uh, respect uh, Johnny Jernigan. Uh, he's an evangelist. He has a great call, a wonderful ministry. And uh, we're so honored and privileged to have him, have him here uh, in the metropolis of Christiana, Pennsylvania. Uh, so come on, everybody. Would you give an over-the-top warm welcome, Pastor Johnny Jernigan. Come on. Evangelist Johnny Jernigan. Would you remain standing? Come on, can we give Jesus the greatest shout of praise we can? Father, we bless you, we exalt you, we magnify you in Jesus' name. In Je- Everybody remain standing. Everybody smile big. Let me see all your teeth. Make this faith declaration out loud. Come on, say it loud. Say, I believe that God wants me to win. Come on, say it again like you mean it. Smile big. Come on. I believe that God wants me to win. Now, how many you believe that? Come on. I heard somebody say a long time ago, Jesus is not coming back for a bunch of losers. He's coming back for a victorious church, a triumphant church, a winning church. And I don't care what happens in the world. I want you to know we will win. Do you believe that? Come on. And God will help us to do that. Amen. So great to be back here with you guys. I love 
Pastor Sam and Pastor Michelle, I love you guys. I love this church. We go a long way back. And uh, how many of you have been with me before? Hold your hand up real high so I can see you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Great to see you again. How many of you have never been with me before? Would you hold your hand up so I can see you? Awesome. Uh, fresh meat. Hallelujah. Awesome. Uh, it's an honor always to be here. My name's Johnny. I don't know everybody here, so on the count of three, everybody tell me your name as loud as you can. Here we go. One, two, three. All right, now I know everybody. All right. Listen, this weekend is about going fishing. This weekend is about going fishing. Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you what? Fishers of men, not keepers of the aquarium. See, I want you to know Christians don't tell lies. We sing them. Because we're singing about this authority just a moment ago. How many believe that we have that kind of kingdom authority? Come on. That whenever you walk into a room, the anointing of God goes with you into that room. Do you believe that? Every time you walk into a place, the power of God goes with you. You're not just a human being with flesh and, and blood, but you are. if you know Christ and are born again, then all of that kingdom authority lives and breathes and has his being in you. And the enemy loves to keep us in the church so that we never impact the world outside. And I want you to know this. The, uh, eventually, eventually, being a Christian has got to cost us more than just going to church. I want to say that again. Being a Christian has got to cost us more than just going to church. It's learning what God has called us to do. How many of you remember the woman at the well that Jesus surprised one day and he crossed over the, uh, the cultural barriers and he began to talk to a woman that culturally he shouldn't talk to and then she realized who this guy was. She didn't wait five years for Bible college to go down into the community. She didn't wait until she'd been in church for five years. The Bible says instantly she ran down in the city and said, come see the guy who has told me everything about myself. And then the Bible says that the entire community came there and they said later on, they said, now that we have seen him and we have heard him, now we believe, not because of what you have said, but because of what we have seen. Come on. You don't have to wait till you're five years old in the faith. You don't have to wait till you've been in church 30 years to tell somebody about Christ. God wants to use you to do something right now to change the darkness. Listen, we can stand in the light and scream at the darkness, or we can stand in the darkness and shine the light. I want to say that again. We can stand in the light and scream at the darkness, or we can stand in the darkness and shine the light. I believe God brought you here tonight. Everybody that's here tonight, all the other places you could be, we bless you that you are here tonight because it's time to go fishing. I said it's time to go fishing. Can you say that with me? It's time to go fishing. Can we say that real loud? It's time to go fishing. I want you to pray with me right now. Would you lift your hands and would you just ask for his anointing to come on every one of us and that we're, we're going to capture something. I am an evangelist, and I am asking that the anointing of an evangelist is going to be triggered in this house tonight. Can you agree with me? Father, we agree with Pastor Sam. We agree with Pastor Michelle. We agree with all the leaders here and all these wonderful people, those watching online. And, Lord, we're asking that God, that the Lord, this, this church is going to change because I'm going to change. This community is going to change because we are going to change. And we're not just going to stay inside and hold on to this. We're going to go into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in so that the house of God will be full. We're going to overcome our fears. We're going to overcome our intimidations. And we're going to get bold in our faith. And we're going to go tell everybody what Jesus has done for us. And that, Lord, what you can do for them. So, Lord, give us ears to hear and eyes to see what you want to say to us tonight. And when we leave, God, may we leave as a bunch of Holy Ghost terrorists who put pressure on the powers of darkness in this region in Jesus' name. We're not going to let, we're not going to be the peers under the pressure. We're going to be the peers applying the pressure. And we believe you're going to help us to do this now. And we give you praise now in Jesus' name. If you agree, everybody say amen. Well, before you're seated, would you look at the person next to you and say, it's time to win souls. Would you tell somebody right now, it's time to win souls. It's time to win souls. It's time to win souls. All right, you can be seated. Hey, so glad you're here. If you have your Bible with you or your device, uh, would you open that with me to the book of 1 Kings chapter 18? 1 Kings chapter 18, beginning of verse 20. We'll look at God's Word there together in just a moment. 
Pastor Sam, when we were talking back several months ago, when we first talked about this, was what could we do to reach the community? Every week, uh, we do an event uh, all over the country called the Right to Invite Weekend. The Right to Invite Weekend. How many of you know we have to earn the right to tell people what Christ can do in their life? And looking for those God opportunities, being trained and prepared to tell people about Christ. Look at me, and I want you to hear this. I've never seen more people being saved in all of my ministry than I'm watching right now all over the country. Every week, every week, people are coming to the altar because, simply because they were invited to the house of God. Simply because someone invited them. There are three reasons most Christians never share their faith. Three reasons most Christians never share their faith. The first reason most Christians never share their faith publicly is because of fear. Everybody say fear. The second reason most Christians will never share their faith, their whole faith life, is secondly because of fear. Everybody say fear. And it's shocking, but the third reason most Christians never share their faith publicly is because of fear. Everybody say fear. Fear of rejection fear of not knowing what to say, or fear of losing their reputation. I want you to know Jesus was a man of no reputation. And as long as I'm worried about what somebody thinks about me, listen, I've been rejected so much that even my yo-yo wouldn't come back to me, all right? I know about rejection. I mean, you look at my hairline, praise God. God gave me one face and cleared off a spot for another one, hallelujah. I've been rejected my whole life. So if people reject me, it's no big deal. If they reject Jesus, it's eternally a big deal. And so what we've invited you here tonight is to speak words over you. I am a pure Ephesians 4.11 called out evangelist. And I know that my purpose is to stand next to the pastor of this house and serve the vision that your pastor has. And when an evangelist stands next to a pastor and serves the vision of that pastor, I'm watching this all over America, something is released in the heavenlies. Something is triggered in the heavenlies that we all walk out wearing the mantle of that evangelist. Oh, that was pretty pukey. I said, when a pastor stands, an evangelist stands next to a pastor and serves the vision of that pastor, something is triggered, something is released that cannot happen any other way. That those two ministry gifts serving underneath the vision of your pastor, something is released. And we all can walk out wearing the mantle of an evangelist. No matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, God truly wants you to reproduce who you are so that other people can know what Christ has done for you. I was sitting on an airplane uh, several months ago flying out of Atlanta to Portland, Oregon. And I'll never forget this as long as I live. Uh, there was a young couple sitting next to me in their 30s, I would say. And the husband was sitting next to the window. His wife was in the middle seat, and I was on the aisle. And so we're flying to Portland, Oregon. We take off. He has his beats on. He's typing on his computer feverishly and just never comes up for air the entire flight. For almost three and a half hours, just typing feverishly, found out I, I, she and his wife was sitting next to me, and she was chatty Kathy. Uh, she wanted to talk, so I said, "Hey, what are you guys doing? What are you going to do in Portland?" She said, "We're going to party in Portland for three days." And she told me all they were going to drink and all they were going to smoke and all they were going to sleep with and who they were going to sleep with and what they were going to do and how many people that were going to be there. And I mean, it was wild and it was wicked. And then she looked at me and said, "What do you do for a minute, uh, for a living?" And I said, well, I'm a minister of the gospel. And she said, let me stop you right there and tell you I'm an atheist and I don't do the God thing. And I looked right at her. I'll never forget this moment. The Holy Ghost gave me a word of wisdom just in that moment for her. And I looked at her and I said, well, I feel sorry for you. And she said, you feel sorry for me? Then her eyes got real big and indignant, like, why do you feel sorry for me? Because they were executives with Apple Computers, and they were on their way to a conference in Portland. And she said, we're executives with Apple Computers. We have everything this world has to offer. Why would you feel sorry for us? I said, because you don't know who I know. And I said, and you don't know what I know. And she said, what's that? I said, can I tell you? And she said, Yes. And so I began to tell her how Christ had transformed my life. Then I was a 16-year-old boy. I was a borderline alcoholic going the wrong way with the wrong group of people. And a beautiful girl invited me to go to church. And I didn't go to church, but she was so pretty. I said, honey, I'll go anywhere with you, all right? And so I went to Moffett Road Baptist Church in Mobile, Alabama. And I was passing notes to, the, the, to her the entire service. I wasn't listening to the preacher. But all of a sudden, the preacher said, if you don't know Jesus, you're going to go to hell. 
And, and then, he, then he said this. He said, but God loves you and God wants to help you. And I'd never heard that before. All I'd ever heard was God was mad at me and God was going to judge me. I never heard that God loved me and God had a plan for me. I said, if that's true and God loves me and God wants to help me, then I want that. And I got up from the back of that church and I came to the front and I gave my life to Christ. And that was July 22nd, 1979. And I haven't had a drink of alcohol in my mouth since that night. God turned everything around for me. And so... She said, wow, you really believe this, don't you? And I said, I don't believe this. I live this. I said, can I read something to you? And she said, sure. So I let her read Romans 3.23, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. How many know she messed up right there? Come on. Because faith comes by and hearing by the. And when she began to read the word of God off of my cell phone, I keep the Roman road scriptures right here on my cell phone. So at any time, I don't have to pull out my Bible. I can just pull out my phone, and I just let her read those Roman road scriptures. I let her read, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I said, I said, have you ever heard that? She said, I've never heard that before. Now, living in Atlanta, Georgia, never heard Romans 3.23. Then I said, hey, can I read you one more? So I read Romans 6, 23. That the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. She said, I think I've heard that one. I said, can I read you one more? I said, Romans 5, 8 says that God demonstrated his great love for us and that while we were still in our sin, in all of the mistakes we've ever made in our life, God loved us so much he died for us and was willing to give his life for us. She said, I've never heard that one for us. I said, can I read you one more? And, and she didn't have anywhere to go. All right, so we were 35,000 feet in the air, so I read Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you can be saved. For with the heart you believe and you're justified, with your mouth you confess and you're born again. She said, I've never heard that one before. And I said, this is real. She said, I can tell you believe this. I said, could I just pray for you? And she said, knock yourself out. I said, could we join hands? She said, do we have to? And I said, well, it'll help. And so she said, okay. Now her husband's still typing feverishly, and I'm holding his wife's hand sitting right here next to him. Uh, so I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, you are the true and living God and prove to this young lady what you know about her and how much you love her and how much you want to help her. And she pulled her hand away from me. She said, I felt something. What was that? I said, that's the God you said you don't believe in reaching out to tell you that he loves you and he has a plan for you. She turned to the window and didn't speak to me the rest of the flight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I didn't get to lead her to Christ right there, but I can guarantee you this. She did not have fun partying in Portland for three days. Come on. Some plant, come on, some water, but he's the Lord of the harvest. Nothing, nothing times nothing is, if we try, now come on, nothing times nothing is, if we try nothing, we do nothing. I get to lead a lot of people to Christ, not because I'm uh, better than anybody else or not because I know a whole lot more than anybody else. It's because I try more than anybody else. And I tell everybody, everywhere I go, what God can do in their life. I pastor America's largest church. I pastor Walmart. Because if you ever want to be a soul winner, Walmart's the greatest place to ever go to find somebody. Because how many of you know the, the creepy crawlies come out late at night at Walmart? Come on. And so I do the grocery shopping for my house for two reasons. Number one, I spend less money than my wife does. And then number two... Uh, I, I, there's always somebody to tell about Jesus. And so a couple of months ago, I was walking in, and it was about 11.30 at night, right before they closed, and there's a little black girl behind the counter, beautiful little uh, black girl behind the counter, and, and, and they're supposed to say, welcome to Walmart, how can I help you? But she was so tired, she said, welcome to Walmart, how can I help you? And I said, I'm wonderful, fantastic, terrific, great, fabulous, and super. And she looked at him and said, what are you drinking? All right? And I said, can I tell you? And she said, Yes. And so I told her just very quickly how God had transformed my life. She started crying. She was very pregnant. Her boyfriend had left her. She said, my boyfriend left me. I used to go to church, but I'm not serving God. My life is a mess, and I know I need to get back with God. I said, you can do it right here at this checkout counter at Walmart. She said, right here? I said, right now. I said, could I pray with you? And so I grabbed her by the hand, pulled her hand toward me, and said, Father, and led her in a prayer of repentance right there in that place. And I want you to know, when she looked up, she had really long eyelashes. When she looked up, those eyelashes came up, and there was just gleam in her eyes. And she came around the checkout counter and gave me a big bear hug, picked me up off the ground. It was embarrassing. And, and, and I want you to know that girl has been going to church every week in my hometown simply because we invited her. 
I was in Portland, Oregon. How many of you remember the riots that were going out in Portland? Come on, wave at me. And it was horrible out there. The Lord said, go get right in the middle of that. As soon as we could travel after the pandemic, the Lord said, go get right in the middle of that and share my love with those people. Okay, and so the pastor and I, his name was Shane Wallace, we went out to a subway and we walked in with a little bag of candy just to tell people that we love them, just like we'll do tomorrow. Come on. Just like we'll do tomorrow. And so we walked into a subway with a little bag of candy and it was a guy behind the counter had his hair spiked up about a foot off the top of his head. I mean, his hair was spiked way up off of his head and he had tattoos everywhere. You ever seen the flames painted on a car before? He had the flames painted on his face. And he had tattoos everywhere, all the way down to his toes and his sandals. There wasn't an inch on this boy that didn't have tattoos. And he had piercings all over his body. And places you should not have piercings, this boy had piercings. And you would think that he would say, I'm not interested. And so we said, hi, we're, I'm Johnny, this is Shane. We're, we're from Harvest Assembly. And, man, we just wanted to stop by and give you a little gift and say thank you for what you do in the community. Thank you for the people you employ. Thank you for what you do for the economy and for all the riots are going on. And as hard as it's been to stay open, we want to say thank you for what you do in the community. He said, wow, man, nobody's ever given me candy and said thank you for what I do in the community. And we said, well, we just really want to say thank you for staying open. We gave him a card, said we'd like to invite you to the church. He said, hey, man, listen, I, I'm, a, I'm an agnostic. He said, I don't do the church thing. He said, but I really appreciate the candy. And how many of you know we need discernment? When to talk and when not to talk. And you can tell it's hard for me not to talk, all right? And so the Lord said, don't say anything else, just love him. And so we just said, hey, man, you're welcome at the church. You're welcome to come anytime, and we hope you have a great night. We turned to walk out, and when we got to the door, we turned around. He was already eating the candy out of the bag that we had given to him. He put the card in his back pocket. When he went home that night, he was the manager. He undressed, and that card was in his back pocket. He felt it, he said, and he pulled it out. And he said, you know what? Those were really nice guys. He said, I think I want to go to that church just to see what they do. Come on. So the next morning, he and his wife show up. Her hair is just as spiked up as his is. She's got piercings everywhere. She's got tattoos everywhere. They're sitting on the back row with their arms folded the entire time I'm preaching. And the look on their face was, we're going to murder you right after the service. Because that's what I was thinking, all right? And when I gave the invitation, when I gave the altar call, he said it was the first time he's ever heard God speak to him. He heard a voice that said, what they are saying is true, and you need this. Not what I was saying. What they are saying, I believe he heard Father, Son, and Holy Spirit saying, I love you, and I have a plan for you, and I can turn it around, and I can give you a new beginning, and I can show you a better way. And when I gave the invitation, he and his wife came to the altar and prayed to receive Jesus. Today, they're a part of the ministry school of that church, and God has turned their life around. Come on, somebody. Simply because, simply because we invited them to the house of God. Come on. Some plant, some water, but he's the Lord of the harvest. I was in Miami. I'll tell you one more before we get into the scripture. I was in Miami, and we were uh, going out into the community. It was a, a very large Hispanic church. I was the only person that spoke English, and uh, they had four worship teams uh, there. They just rotated worship teams for each service, and we had always told them, who is my one? Can everybody say that? Who is my one? Come on, say it really loud. Who is my one? That if every person every week focuses on just getting one person in this house, how many believe something supernatural can happen? That if we get them under the anointing of that worship, if we get them under the anointing of that pastor, are they going to hear about the love of God? Are they going to hear? Do you know why a lot of lost people don't get saved in our churches in America today? Because there's no lost people sitting in there. It's all Christians. And so we preach to the preached again and again and again. But if something changes and we say my pastor is anointed to tell them, if I can just get them in the house of God, what did Jesus say? Go into the highways and hedges and compel them so that my house will be full. Jesus wanted his house full. The Hispanic pastor, the worship pastor of the fourth service that Sunday had been busy that week. He had not invited anybody to come to the service that week. So he, he was almost to the church for the last service, and he saw this Hispanic guy walking down uh, close to the gas station. So he rolled the window down uh, and, and, and let the window down and, and said, hey, I'm, I'm on my way over to this church. I'm the worship pastor. Would you like to come to go to church with me? And the guy said, 
okay. And he got in the car with him. He was on his way to the gas station to get something to drink. He took him down there and got him something to drink, brought him to church. When I gave the altar call, the guy came running to the altar, bawling his eyes out, giving his life to Christ. And, and so I, I want you to know that this guy was from the Dominican Republic. He had moved to Miami uh, several months earlier and, and couldn't find a job, couldn't place, find a place to live. Everything was just hard. As we were getting ready to dismiss the service that day, the Hispanic pastor stopped. He said, can I just tell you about this guy? He said, listen, I did not invite anybody to the service today, but I saw this guy walking, so I picked him up and brought him to church this morning. And he said, he's here giving his life to Christ. He, he can't find a job, and he needs a car. Can we just pray for him? When we prayed for him, a, a woman came walking up, and she said, listen, I have an old car at my house. My mother died three months ago, and if you want it, you can have it. It's an old Toyota Camry, but it runs really good. And she said, I'll go get the title. Goes home, gets the title, comes back. As soon as she's gone, another man walks up and says, I own an electrical business. If you'd like to work, I'd like to hire you. This guy came to church, got saved, got a job and a car in one service. Come on. Do you know why? Simply be, I'm going to tie my shoe. Simply because we invited him to the house of God. Simply because. We invited him to the house of God. Everybody say you can tie your shoe. Come on. All right. Simply because we invited him to the house of God, that guy's life has been turned upside down. If God can do that in other places, can God do that here in Christiana? Come on. And what pastor has been saying is this has got to cost us more than just coming in and watching the professionals do it on the platform. This is us saying, God, you have transformed my life. And because you've transformed my life, I have an obligation to go tell other people what God can do in their life. And it's really important. Can you put that picture up on the, on the screen for me of People Magazine? I want you to see this picture, if you would. Uh, this has been in my, in, my, um, uh, in my folder for the last four years. This is June, People Magazine, June issues uh, of, of 2018. There are two people on the cover of this magazine, and one of them is Kate Spade. The other is Anthony Bourdain. Now, you might, the ladies in here know who Kate Spade was. Kate Spade was a billionaire, B, billionaire, had everything with her fashion line, her handbags, very, very expensive, known all over the globe for her fashion line. She was an atheist. She did not believe there is a God. Found out that her husband was having an affair. She became so depressed she wrote a suicide note, and she wrote this line in her suicide note. There's nothing in this world for me. And she said, I leave all my worldly possessions to my 13-year-old daughter. She took a scarf from her own fashion line and hung herself in her New York apartment and killed herself. I wish I could have gotten to Kate Spade because there is something in this world for her, and his name is Jesus. But if we're just sitting in the church, how many of you know we can never get to the Kate Spades? Three days later, filming in India, was a guy next to her named Anthony Bourdain. You can see him on this screen. Anthony Bourdain was a, a world-renowned chef. He had a show on CNN called Parts Unknown. And he would go to the most exotic places in the world to eat the most exotic recipes and foods around the world. He was, he was an agnostic. And an agnostic says, well, maybe there is a God, but there's no way you could ever know him. So he became depressed while filming in India. Multi, multi-millionaire, known all over the world. He left a suicide note and wrote, almost wrote word for word three days later, there's nothing in this world for me, which is why both of them are on this magazine cover. And he took a gun and stuck it next to his head and killed himself. I wish I could have gotten to Anthony Bourdain because there is something in this world and his name is Jesus and we need to get to them. I want you to know that these people, though famous, I want you to look at their pictures again. I want you to see them. Though famous, I want you to know there's people just like them all over Christiana, Pennsylvania. Suicide is at the highest level it has ever been as a nation. Since the pandemic, specifically among our young people, because they're not getting enough views, they're not getting enough likes, they're not getting enough follows, so they feel like they'll never, ever measure up. And our young people are killing themselves at a level that we've never seen as an American culture. If we're not doing everything we can with what William Booth said for the Salvation Army hundreds of years ago, if we're not rescuing the perishing, they will spend an eternity in hell, and they're within reach of this church. And if we just stay in this church, we will never, ever touch those people. Do you hear my heart tonight? 
Would you stand with me? Come on, all, come on, all over this room. God has called you here tonight. You're not here just because pastor organized a service. You're not watching online just because you have nothing else to do. God brought you here tonight to anoint you and release something on you tonight that you're going to say, it's got to cost me more than just listen to the beautiful songs and listen to the amazing teaching. Lord, anoint me to do the work of an evangelist. Would you lift your hands to the Lord with me? Come on, right now. Come on, say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Come on, say it loud. Lord Jesus, anoint me tonight to rescue the perishing. Anoint me tonight to go and find them and pull them out of darkness into your glorious light. I am a soul winner. I can win souls. I will obey what you told me to do. Help me now to capture your heart and do the work of an evangelist in Jesus' name. Now, come on, give the Lord a shout of praise one more time. Come on. You can be seated. I want to read something to you very quickly, and then we're going to pray, and we're going to ask that this mantle is going to come on you. I could preach for hours. I have 15 minutes. So I need you to agree with me right now that a miracle is going to take place, and the evangelist will preach this in 15 minutes. Can you agree? All right, read this with me. In 1 Kings chapter 18, beginning in verse 20, it says this. So Ahab sent word throughout all Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left. But Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets choose one for themselves. Let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. Listen carefully. The God, uh, the, then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire, he is God. Then all the people said, what you say is good. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one of the bulls and prepare it first since there are so many of you. Call on the name of your God, but do not, and notice that's little G, little weenie God, little false devil, little liberal God. You call on the name of your God, and, but do not light the fire. So they took the bull given them and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Baal answer us, they shouted, but there was no response. No one answered, and they danced around the altar that they had made. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a god. Perhaps he's in deep thought or busy or traveling or in the bathroom. Maybe he is sleeping and must be awakened. So they shouted louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom until their blood flowed. Midday passed, and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time of the evening sacrifice. This thing started in the morning. It's gone past noon. Now it's in the evening, and look at what it says. But there was no response no one answered, and no one paid attention. Look at me. This is right, like reading uh, the news in America today. There was a showdown in this passage of Scripture on who could get fire from the altar. Was it the prophets of Baal, or was it the prophets of God? And there were 450 prophets to one. Have you ever felt like that there's a lot more with them than are, are, there are with us? Come on. Does it ever feel like that we're losing ground instead of gaining ground? I want you to understand this. There's nothing new under the sun. And they were, he was way outnumbered, 450 to 1, but he knew that their God was false. Do we know that their God is false? I want you, he knew that his God was false, their God was false, so he knew they couldn't get fire on this altar. So he said, all right, there's 450 of you and there's only one of me. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to prepare an altar. You prepare one, I'll prepare one. And the God who answers by fire, he is God. So the Bible tells us that let the prophets of Baal go first because he knew they were going to make a mockery of themselves. And how many of you see again and again and again that every time this liberal focus in America tries to pass another law or make another TikTok or put something else out on Facebook that it f blows up in their face because it is a mockery and God exposes it for what it is and reveals who the true and living God is again and again and again. 
I said he, he tr proves who the true and living God is again and again and again. So the Bible says they took their bull first, and the Bible says they started dancing around it. Then they slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until their blood began to flow. And then the Bible says they prophesied frantically until the midday noon, but no one heard them, no one paid attention, because there was no God who could answer them. As a matter of fact, Josephus, the great church historian, said they were probably had some of their prophets underneath the altar go with some flint rocks going. Everybody do that with me. Come on. Come on, do a little spit. Come on. Come on, Brother Beard. Come on. All right, so they probably had some flint rocks trying to get that thing to spark something. And he, the Bible says he began to taunt them. I wasn't there, but I have a vivid imagination. He knew they couldn't get fire on this altar, so he's going, nah, 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 nah. All right, because he knew that their God was false. He knew that their God was false. There is only one. I want you to understand this. Uh, for Everybody who's 25 years old and younger, stand up. Everybody 25 and younger, stand up, would you? 25 and younger. Would you give all of these amazing young men and women a great, great, great big hand? Can I tell you something? Remain standing. Just remain standing. You're the first generation in American history that believes there are multiple ways to heaven. You're the first generation that embraces that philosophy. Reverend Oprah Winfrey ordained herself in Yankee Stadium after 9-11. I have a copy of that video. I'll never forget it. And I watch it periodically just to remember what she said. She had what was called a healing service after 9-11, and she had every religious leader on the platform with her, and she said this to America that the world was watching on television. She, she had Buddha, she had Hindu, she had Muslim, she had Christian, she had Sikh, she had every kind of atheist and agnostic on the platform with her, and she said this, these are all alternate paths to the same God. It does not matter how you worship as long as you worship. Well, Oprah Winfrey meant well, but Oprah Winfrey was wrong. People say, how could you say Oprah Winfrey's wrong? She's the richest woman in America. She's so rich and so popular. Because they came to Jesus and said, Jesus, how can, all these young people, look at me. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, tell them this. You don't tell them I'm some way. You don't tell them I'm one way. You tell them I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And nobody will get to the Father but through Jesus. So I want you to understand this. To all these young ones that are standing, and if you're watching online, I want you to know that doesn't mean we're better than Muslims. It means Jesus is better. That doesn't mean we're better than Hindus. It means Jesus is better. And don't you be deluded in your faith that there are multiple ways to heaven. There is only one way where men can be saved, and it is through the name of the Lord Jesus and him only. Do you believe that? Would you give these young people a great, great, great big hand? You can sit down. So here the Bible says they're dancing, they're bleeding, and they're prophesying, and they still can't get fire on their altar. I I've been to that church. So here they are now doing all these counterfeit things. And, 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 and I I've always thought this, if psychics are so smart, how come they're not winning the lotteries? Okay, so they're, they're counterfeiting worship, they're counterfeiting the prophetic gift, and they're counterfeiting wor uh, dancing around the altar of the Lord and still can't get fire. Verse 30, I want you to read with me now. Keep reading. Then Elijah said to all the people, come here to me. And they came to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. Has that happened in America? Elijah took 12 stones, one for each of the tribes descended from Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Your name shall be Israel. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. He dug a trench around it, large enough to hold two shays of seed, which is seven gallons of seed. He arranged the wood, cut the bull into pieces, laid it on the wood. Then he said to them, Fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and on the wood. Do it again, he said. They did it again. Do it a third time, he ordered. They did it a third time. Then water ran down around the altar and even filled the trench. Listen, at the time of the sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and in Christiana, and that I am your servant and have done all these things that you command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you, O Lord, are God and are turning their hearts back again. Look at me if you would. The prophet Elijah said, all right, counterfeit gods, you've had your chance. 
Now it's God's turn. And so he steps out and he, he, he calls the people together. And they're in the middle of a drought. And how many of you know in a drought, water is priceless? And so three and a half years into a drought. And if you go back and read the chapter earlier in 1 Kings 17, he said there will be neither rain nor dew except at my command. Neither rain nor dew except at my command. And so here he tells the people, all right, let's build our altar. And he said, go get four large jars of water. And he said, pour it on the sacrifice. So they pour four large, huge jars of water that's priceless in a drought on this sacrifice. And they pour it. And the water is drenched. He said, do it again. So they do it again. They get four large jars. He said, do it again. Everybody do it with me. Come on. I wish you could see what I just saw. All right. And they pour it all over this thing. Now water is all around the trench. And the Bible tells us that the time of the sacrifice, he lifted up his hands. He said, oh, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel. And we've done all these things at your command. Answer us, Lord. He put God to the test. And I want you to understand, if God doesn't answer him, all he's got is a bunch of wet wood. Here's my question to you tonight. Is there fire on your altar? Because if God has done something inside of you, it's got to translate to the people outside of this house. And what Pastor Sam has invited us to do is to say, God, touch us with fire. Touch us with fire. And I want you to read what it says now, if you would, in verse 38. Come on, can you read it out loud? Can we read this together? Out loud, come on. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the soil and also licked up the water in the trench. Keep reading. And when all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Keep reading. Then Elijah commanded them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let anyone get away. And they seized them, and Elijah had them brought down to the Kishon Valley and slaughtered there. One more verse. Keep reading. And Elijah said to Ahab, Go eat and drink, for there is the sound of a heavy rain. In the middle of a drought, in the middle of a drought, I want you to understand that we've watched our beloved nation being torn apart over these last several years. And we're in the middle of a drought that it looks like. And God, I want you to know we're saying, God, where are you? God, where are you? And you know what God is saying? My children, where are you? That the same spirit that raised him from the dead now dwells and lives and quickens your mortal body. That he said, I can heal the sick through you. I can cast out devils through you. I can set the captive free through you. But I'm waiting on you to arise and to say, God, we need fire on our altar. And then everyone said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. What do they say? The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. What do they say? Come on. The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Whenever somebody gets touched by the fire of God, they don't have to ha worry about the name on the, on the billboard. They don't have to worry about the name of the religion. They just want the God that touches them. And only in many places, the only God that's being demonstrated is the false God of alcoholism and drug addiction and unbridled sexuality and homo uh, the obsession with homosexuality that we see happening in our culture. And God is saying, you're standing right now in a clashing with Christiana that this amazing church is sitting up here on this hill. And there are people, when I drove through the community on my way up here this afternoon from Philadelphia, when I came up here, I saw people that were out of the community and, and, and they did not demonstrate that they knew the things of God. But I, I said, God, send these people down this hill. Come on. Send these people down this hill with fire on their altar that everyone they touch will say, surely the Lord is God. The Lord is God. I want to give you four things very quickly. I want you to write this down somewhere that the prophet of God did. And we're going to do right now tonight. And we're going to ask that God will help us to do tomorrow. Number one, they called a meeting. They called a meeting. Can you say that with me? They called a meeting. I want you to know he got all the warriors with him to do what God had called him to do. I remember one time I was sitting in a McDonald's and um, I, I, there was a bunch of uh, gothic kids that came in this restaurant. I'll never forget it, Pastor Sam, uh, in Mobile, Alabama. And they were all dressed in complete black, black 
eyeliner, black fingernails, black lipstick, chalky white makeup, black clothing, black hair. And I wanted to tell these young people about Jesus, but my wife was not with me, and she's my armor bearer. And when she's with me, I'm as bold as a lion, but I was feeling a little intimidated. So my wife is not here, so brother, can you come up here with me and be my wife? All right, come on. Would y'all give him a great big hand? Come on, everybody. So a little while later, my wife, my wife came in with me. My wife came in with me. And, and all of a sudden, a boldness came on me that I said, let's go tell these young people about Jesus. So I said, sweetheart, and she said, yes, dear. <laughs> I said, let's go tell these young people about Jesus. What do you think? And she said, sounds good. <laughs> I said, will you go with me? And she said, no way. <laughs> Can you help me? And she said, Yes. Okay. Will you go with me? Yes. Will you kiss me? Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went over there. Down here, down here, down here. And we went over there and we started telling all those young people about Jesus because I had my armor bearer with me. Would you give my wife a great big hand? Would you help him tonight? <laughs> he does have soft hands. All right. <laughs> Listen, that's awesome, man. Awesome. Good lotion. All right, listen. Do you know you'll do things with other people you'll never do by yourself? And so as your evangelist, and I don't need an office and I don't need a paycheck, but I do want the title. I want to become tomorrow the staff evangelist of Freedom Life Church. So all in favor of voting me in as your staff evangelist, say aye. All opposed and it carries. See, nobody voted against it. All right, so I want you to know I'm asking that you will join me here tomorrow morning, and we're going to say, God, we believe tonight you're going to touch us with fire so that we can go to the broken and the bruised and the suicidal and those that feel like life has given up on them and their parents have abused them and society has abused them and that we're going to grab them by the hand and we're going to offer the love of Christ through a little bag of candy and a sweet prayer at every place we go tomorrow and say, God, we can do it. One can put a 1,000 a flight. Two can put 10,000 a flight. Look at me. Look at me. There's enough of us in this room right now to turn this region upside down and right side up if we believe that we can. Thank you. There's three people that clap. I said, there's enough of us in this room. Stand up. Stand up. You. This one right here. Mm -hmm. Sister Blonde Hair, stand up. Everybody look at that girl right there. You don't even realize what you're capable of. But all your life, God has prepared you for this season. That he said, I've, I've prepared you that you would be a voice of mine in a wilderness. And you would say, prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. And the spirit of a John the Baptist is coming on that child tonight. That God is going to use you to be a loud voice for him. So get ready, woman of God. Get ready. Because there's a bunch of people who believe in you. Stretch your hands toward her, would you? Hold your hands up to the Lord, would you? God brought you here tonight. He said, I don't want you to just be in dead religion. I want you to be a Holy Ghost terrorist for God, a tornado for heaven, that people will listen to you. And there are people around you that say, what do you think about this and what do you think about that? And it's not just because you got pre pretty curly hair and you're a pretty girl. It's because God says, I'm anointing you to do the work of a John the Baptist and that you'll be a voice in the wilderness saying, prepare the way of the Lord. You're going to remember my ugly face and you're going to remember this night that God said I'm calling you to do that. Will you stretch your hands and agree? Come on church. Father I anoint her tonight to be a John the Baptist. She won't just be an ordinary young person in this community but she'll be a maniac for God and she'll sell out to the things of God in a mighty mighty way. Would somebody clap for that girl right now? Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know your name. Don't know anything about you. But the Lord said, this is what he's going to do for you. You stay with the Pastor Michelle and say, what does that mean? She'll teach you, and you're going to do this. Everybody say, she's going to do this in Jesus' name. If you don't, your hair is going to fall out. Hallelujah. Sore is going to grow on your face, I'm telling you. He called a meeting. Second thing he did, I want you to understand this, he repaired the altar. He repaired the altar. You know what the problem is with most of our altar calls? They don't alter our call. Our time is up, and we're thinking about so many different things. But I watch this all over America. Whenever we give an altar call, because, see, there, we know when we come to church, we're going to sing, we're going to pray, somebody's going to preach, 
And then we're going to pray again. And we know that they're going to drag us to that altar before we leave. So I watch people all over the country just do this. Oh, God. It's 8.30 and I'm starving to death, God. Make that little fat preacher shut up, God. How long do we have to stay here, God? Some of you got that look on your face right now, like, God, how long is this service going to last? How long do we have to be here? And you know what? We watch movies for hours. We binge watch 30 episodes on Netflix. We watch uh, football games for hours. What's wrong with being in the house of God for an extended period of time? And the reason is because we just expect so little. Come on, look at me. God could heal the sickest person in this room tonight. God could raise the dead in this city tomorrow and Sunday. The worst alcoholic and drug addict to get saved this weekend because of what we're going to do tomorrow. The most bound homosexual and atheist in this region could get set free tomorrow because you go out and offer them the love of Christ. Because something is burning in your heart that I can't just go to church. I've got to do something. I've got to do something. Come on, say it. I've got to do something. Come on, say it. i got to do something. We've got to do something about this. He called a meeting. He repaired the altar. Third thing he did was he drew a line in the sand. He said, all right, you've had your chances. He drew a line in the sand. He said, prophets of Baal, you've had your chance. You've been dancing, bleeding, prophesying, and you still don't have any fire on your altar. He called a meeting. He repaired the altar. He drew a line in the sand. Listen, until we get mad enough to get mad enough to do something about the lostness of our culture, we're never going to do anything about it. If we don't create the identity we want our church to have, the community will give us the identity they want us to have. If we don't create the identity that we want our church to have, the community will give us the identity they want us to have. Oh, that's that church up on the, up on the hill. Oh, that's that church up there that a bunch of people go to. How many know this is not what that is? This is a healing center. This is a place of deliverance. This is a place of salvation. This is a place of love. This is a place of hope. This is a place of miracles. Is that what your church is? I said, is that what your church is? I said, is that what your church is? They'll never know it until ordinary people. That couple right there, would y'all just stand up? Yeah. Are y'all together? I never know, so I have to ask. Are y'all married? Oh, we could do it right now if you want to, all right? So hold hands together, can you? You're like a giant sponge, and you're saying, God, I want to win souls. God, I want to win souls. And the Lord brought you here tonight not just to hear another message, but to say, I'm calling you both to be soul winners. I'm calling you to do the work of a soul winner. I'm calling you to do the work of an evangelist. That it's not just enough to keep absorbing and absorbing. Most of us have heard enough Christian preaching to choke on it. Come on, somebody. Eventually, you got to do something. And the Lord said, tell them. I, I, the Lord said, this is all I saw. He said, tell them I'm putting like, like a little key that goes in the back of the little toy. And he said, I'm winding them up. I'm winding them up. I'm winding them up because I'm about to set them loose. And they're about to go out and touch people that I'll never touch. You're going to touch people that Pastor Sam and Pastor Michelle will never touch. But it's going to be people that you will touch. I'll never reach them, but they're in your sphere of influence. And man of God, it's not just her. There's a bold anointing God wants to bring on you. And you used to be one thing before you met Jesus, but God has turned your life upside down. And you should be dead, but God has saved your life so that you could be a man of God and say it's time to get mad enough, to get mad enough, to get mad enough at the devil destroying them with drugs and alcohol and homosexuality and perversions and false doctrines. And he said, tell them I'm winding them up. I'm winding them up. Stretch your hands toward them, would you? Father, anoint them tonight. Lord, put your hand on them. Empower them tonight, oh God, that fire is coming on their altar. And they're going to go do the work of an evangelist. And they're going to go tell people what God can do in their heart. Use this precious couple. Anoint them tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Would somebody give that couple a great, great, great big hand? I'm telling you, you should have stayed home because God's going to mess with your hair. 
And he's going to show you what he's going to do. Get ready, get ready, get ready, what God is going to do for you. They drew a line in the sand until we get mad enough to get mad enough. My brother right there, stand up, who looks like uh, 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 Mariana Rivera. Would you stand up? Yeah. Has he heard that before? He looks just like Mariana Rivera, former pitcher of the New York Yankees. Phenomenal pitcher. Look at me. This is your season to win souls. This is your season to win souls. Is that wife next to you, friend, wife? Yeah, wife, would you stand up next to him? I don't ever know, so I have to ask. Hallelujah. Sister, wife, y'all join hands together. I want you to know something, that while you've been sitting there, you've been saying, God, if this is real, speak to me. Because when you were a younger boy, somebody prophesied over you a long time ago that God had miracles that he wanted to release through you. Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember where you were? And God said, go back and remember what I said to you when you were a little boy, that I'm the God who remembers those things. And I didn't just say those things to you years ago so that you couldn't see them. He said, but the two of you, now that you're yoked together, you couldn't do them back then, but now the time that the two of you are yoked together are going to walk this out together, and God's going to use you. He's going to use you to win souls. And it's time to get mad enough to get mad enough. To say, I've got to go find a way to learn how to talk to the culture and find a way to talk to them that fires on my altar. Will you stretch your hands toward that beautiful couple? Come on, church. Father, anoint them tonight. Empower them tonight. Strengthen them tonight. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord, that sweet couple. Lord, anoint them. Empower them. And what you said to them when they were young, what you said to them when they were young boys and young girls, and God, earlier in their life, God, release it now. Let this be the season of release in their life. And that, God, they're going to be be that tornado for heaven. They're going to be that tornado for heaven. And that God, that you're going to release them to do that great work of the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Would somebody clap for that precious couple? Come on, would you? Hallelujah. Stand up. Yeah. That one with the big earrings. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Sister earrings, I want to tell you something. The Lord brought you here tonight to say, it's time to step to the other side. It's time to step to the other side. That you've gone forward and kind of stepped back. You've gone forward and kind of stepped back, yeah? And the Lord said, this is the time for you to finish the song. For you to become the terrorist for God. For you to become the evangelist. And you were sitting there. And the Lord said, she's crying out. Because in your heart, you were saying, God, speak to me. Speak to me. And the Lord said, tell her I know her name. Before I ever created her with my hand, I created her with my heart. I knew her in her mother's womb. And you're not the product of your mom and dad. They just birthed you. You're the product of your father. And he said, step to the other side. Step to the other side. Step to the other side. This is the time to become the Holy Ghost terrorist. Do you believe it? Lift your hands to heaven. Stretch your hands toward that beautiful girl. Come on, somebody. Father, anoint her tonight. Empower her tonight. Strengthen her tonight. And Lord, let her see all that you have for her and all that you want to accomplish in her. Fulfill this hour. And she's not going to step back this time. She's going to kick the door open and she's going to walk in all that you have for her. In Jesus' name. Would somebody clap for that beautiful girl? (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's the fourth thing. Here's the fourth thing. He called a meeting. He repaired the altar to meet with his God and to ask for fire. He drew a line in the sand. The fourth thing he did was he asked for fire. He asked for fire. We have not because we, he said, ask and it will be. Seek and you will. Knock and the door will be. I'm telling you, church, God is no respecter of persons. This young man right here, Jonathan, stand up. 17 years old, a young evangelist, has every reason to hate God tonight. I wasn't going to say this about him. He has every reason to hate God, but he said, I want to be an evangelist. And there's a burning passion in him that every time I'm around this kid, he just turned 17. And he was knocking my door down and said, you've got to teach me how to be an evangelist. You've got to teach me how to be an evangelist. You've got to teach me how to be an evangelist. And the Lord said that this young man will be the next William Booth, that William Booth who started the Salvation Army, that in the middle of London, England, with the alcoholics and the drug addicts that nobody else was b- believing for, he asked that God would give him the alcoholics and the drug addicts. And the culture rejected William and Catherine Booth and the Salvation Army when they first started. But I want you to know when William Booth died, he got a king's funeral. 
that he was paraded in front of the uh, Buckingham Palace and remembered as a key leader in the earth for all that God had called him to do of the thousands and hundreds of thousands of people that had been set free simply because he asked, God, give me the poor and the broken and the lost. This young man right here has been asking, God, give me the poor, give me the broken. And wherever he goes, he's just as bold as a lion. He's ugly, but he just believes that God can use him. And I want you to know that there's an evangelist. If you're in this room right now and you want to be an evangelist, you want to be a soul winner, stand up, stand up, stand up right now. God brought you here tonight, not just so you sit in a sermon, not just so you hear somebody wail, but the Lord wants to impart something to you tonight. God wants to impart the mantle of a soul winner on you, not just a religious person who goes to the building but the mantle of a soul winner. Look at me, look at me. If you're watching online, if everybody in this room captures the anointing of a gatherer, if everybody in this room captures the anointing of a soul winner, there will never be a ceiling over this house. I want to say that again. If everybody in this room says, Pastor Sam, Pastor Michelle, I'm not just here just so I can sit in the nice Christian service. I'm not just here so I can hear just another sermon or another pretty song with a Mexican jumping being worship leader up here. That brother jumps a lot, man. I wish I had his energy. I'm not just here to hear the song. I'm not just here to hear the sermon. I'm here to be filled with the fire of God so that I can go to my job and I can go to my school and I can go to my community and I can tell them what God can do in their life. When I sat next to that woman on the airplane going to Portland, Oregon, I've never said it to anybody since that time, but I still see her face again and again and again. And I, and I look at her and I said, I feel sorry for you because you don't know who I know and you don't know what I know. Can I tell you, there are thousands within earshot of this church. They don't know who you know, and they don't know what you know. And you know what they're waiting for? For you to keep it, not keep it a secret anymore. But you say, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to ask for fire. I'm going to ask for fire. That if God did it then, God can do it now. And that maybe tonight in September, in harvest season, the reason your pastor is doing this is because everything is drying up so it's ready to burn. Come on, somebody. The culture has dried up and it's ready to burn. Now maybe it's time that God is sending you out in this community with his vision and her vision and saying, God, let the fire fall on me. Let the fire fall on the drug addict and the alcoholic and, 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 the, and the homosexual and the atheist and the agnostic. And I'm going to tell them what you can do. If you want to win souls, get out of your seat. Come up here right now. Come on, don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. Get out of your seat. Come on, get up here right now. Come on, don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. If you want to win souls, just get out of your seat. Get out of your norm. Get out of your seat. Get up here. Get up here. Get up here. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. And I am way past time, Pastor Sam. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, move in real close so everybody can get in. Come on, can y'all move in so they can fill in this altar area? Just come on in here. Just come on in here. Come on in here. If you want to win souls, and you wouldn't be here tonight, you knew why you were coming tonight, and you still came. You knew why you were coming tonight, and you still came. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come up here. Come up here. Come here. Everybody look at this young man. Is he awesome? Come on, is this young man awesome? And God can take... God can take an ordinary young man like this and touch him with fire and set a community ablaze. God can set a community ablaze with you. Come on, do you believe that? Do you believe that? Ordinary people. I was driving south on the interstate in my hometown of Mobile, Alabama about four years ago, right before the pandemic, and I saw the traffic, all three lanes came to a screeching stop, and I saw smoke way down the interstate. I thought, oh, goodness, something horrible's happened. And I, I, it took an hour to go a mile just creeping in the traffic. Finally, I got down there, and there was a car on fire on the other side of the interstate. Nothing slowing traffic down in the direction I'm going. But every heifer in Mobile, Alabama, had to slow down and look across the interstate and find out why that car was on fire. Why? There's something about fire everybody wants. 
Lift your hands to heaven. Come on, all over this room. And say, God, touch me with fire. Come on, just ask him right now. It's a very dangerous prayer. It's a very dangerous prayer. But if you want fire, come on, ask him for it right now. Say, touch me with fire. Come on, cry out for it right now. Touch me with fire. God, tonight, we didn't gather here just to hear a sermon. We didn't gather here. God, it's time to go fishing. It's time to go fishing. It's time tomorrow to go love this city, no matter if it's raining, no matter if the wind is blowing, no matter if a storm is coming through. God, Pastor Sam said it at the beginning, that a greater wind is coming, a greater wind is coming, a greater wind is coming of the fire of God. So come on, lift your hands to heaven. Come on and say, touch me with fire, God. Touch me with fire, God. Touch me with fire, God. Lord, we've called our meeting. Lord, we've repaired the altar. Lord, we're, we're, we're drawing our line in the sand and say, demons, you've had Christiana long enough. Demons, you've had this county long enough. Demons, you've had the homosexuals long enough. Demons, you've had the alcoholics long enough. Demons, you've had the atheists and the agnostics long enough. Demons, you've had those of other races long enough. Demons, you've had all those people and held them away from the house of God long enough. Now it's time for us to go and get them with the fire of God and compel them to come in so that this house will be full. To compel them to come in so that this house will be full. Come on, play that music loud. Come on, play it loud. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, play it loud. Come on, you believe right now. Come on. Spirit of God, come, Spirit of God, come. Come on, play it loud one more minute. Come on, play it loud. Yeah, come on, come on. We believe in God. We believe in God. We believe in God. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around for just a moment. If you came in here tonight and you say, you know what, my life is kind of distant from God, my life is kind of casual, my faith has just kind of gotten dry. And I need that fire of God to burn in my heart again. There's somebody in this room right now. You, you're not going to get another chance. This is your last chance. There's somebody here. The Lord said, tell them this is their last chance that I'm calling them. I'm calling them to once and for all sell out for God. To once and for all sell out for God. You've played the game. You've come to the meetings. You've sat in here. You've sang the songs. But your heart is cold. And there's things in your life that are secret that nobody knows. And God says, tonight I want to set you free. Tonight I want to put fire on you that you'll never go back to those things again. Every head bowed. Pray, Christian. Somebody's life is in the balance. Somebody's life is in the balance. Young lady, young man, mom or dad, guest here tonight, no matter who you are, if you're here from the back of the room or you're right up here in the front, ask yourself, God, are you talking to me? God, are you talking to me? And if that's you anywhere in this room, if that's you anywhere in this room, just the keyboard for just a moment. If that's you anywhere in this room and you say, my life is not where it needs to be with God and I know I need that fire. I know I need to get closer. I can fool everybody else but I can't fool God. And I know he's talking to me, Pastor Johnny. I know he's talking to me, and I need to get closer to God. Before we go out tomorrow, i got to get my heart right with God. If that's you anywhere in this room, no matter who's on your right and left, when I count to three, raise your hand right now and shove it down the devil's throat. Come on. Here we go. One, two, three. If that's you anywhere in this room, raise it now. Raise it now. Raise it now. 
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm going to wait one more second. There's somebody else. There's somebody else that God's saying, I, I, I want you to come closer. I want you to come closer. If there's even a tinge in your heart that God might be talking to you, I wouldn't leave this room without getting that fire of God. If you didn't raise your hand, you say, I know it's me. I need to get closer to God. Pray for me, preacher. Raise it now. Get my attention. Raise it now. Yes. I see you, honey. I'm glad I asked again. Anybody else? I see it, honey. Anybody else? I see it, honey. I see it, honey. I see it, young man. Hallelujah. Look at me. Every person that raised their hand, get up here on the platform with me. Every person that raised their hand, get up on the platform with me. Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. Come on. You just get up here. Just get up here right now. Every person that raised their hand, you come. You come. Come on. We'll, you, you come around the side. We'll wait, we'll wait for you to get around to the side. Come on. Let, will you clap for them while they make their way? Come on, church. Hallelujah. Because we're about to ask for the anointing of an evangelist to be released in this room. I've been fighting for you since I came in this room tonight, man of God. Yeah, I've been fighting. You do it. And I want you to know, man of God, this is the time that God is saying, you have no idea what God has planned for you. Neither has it even entered into your mind what God has stored up for them who love him. And man of God, if you could see just a little bit of what God wants to release in you, this is the time to go gather them. Stretch your hands toward these. Look at me. It's time to sell out. It's time to sell out. And not play the game. Look at me. The greatness of God wants to erupt in you. The greatness of God wants to erupt in you. Will you give all of these on this platform? Come on, somebody. A standing ovation. Come on. Look at me. It's time. You know it. It's time. Because he called you a long time ago. And he said, this is for you. But popularity gets in the way. People's opinions get in the way. But you have no idea. You're going to be po more popular than TikTok. You're going to be kingdom popular. You're going to be kingdom popular. And you're going to be popular with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Stretch your hands toward her, church. Come on. And God is saying tonight that it's for you, sweetheart. It's for you, young man. It's for you, young man. It's for all of these. Stretch your hands toward them. Would everybody pray this prayer out loud so nobody be embarrassed? Come on, everybody pray it out loud. Everybody pray this out loud. And you on the platform, pray it with me. This is your time. Everybody pray it out loud. Come on, here we go. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I know it was my sins that nailed you on that cross. And I'm sorry, Lord. Please forgive me. I say with my mouth that Jesus is the Christ. Come on, say it loud. I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. I give you all of my past, all of my mistakes, all of my hurt, all of my pain, all of my sin. I give you my future, everything I will ever become. And I start over tonight, a child of God, and I receive you now as my only Lord, as my only hope, as my only breath. You died for me. Help me live for you. Tonight, I make my mind up. I'm going with you. Though none go with me, I'm going with you. I am an evangelist. I can win souls. I will win souls in Jesus' name. Now stretch your hands toward them, church. Come on. Satan, take your hands off of every one of them on this platform. Let them remember this night for the rest of their night. Like you did me, God, 43 years ago that I've never forgotten it. Let her never forget it, God, that, God, your hand is on her right now, and she can be a mighty soul winner for you. That every one of these on this platform, come on, church, pray for them right now, that they'll never be the same. They will burn as a terrorist for God. They will burn as a terrorist for God. They will burn as a terrorist for for God, stretch your hands toward this woman right now. I'm telling you, lift your hands to the Lord. He says, I'm going to break all the fear. I'm going to break all the intimidation. And I'm going to let your boldness rise. And you're going to become a mouthpiece for God. And God's going to do it through you. Get ready, woman of God. Get ready, woman of God. Come here. The Lord said, I'm taking the muzzle off of your mouth. And you're not going to be ashamed of God again. You're not going to be ashamed of him again. You're not going to be ashamed of him again. And he said, I'm calling you 
I'm calling you to be an evangelist. I'm calling you to do the work of a soul winner. And this is what God's calling you to. And God's calling you son. And God's calling you son. And he's calling you sweetheart. He's calling you son. He's calling you ma'am. He's calling you ma'am. Come here. He says, I'm calling you to do, be, do the work of an evangelist. I'm calling you to be a soul winner. And there are many, many people that Pastor Sam or Michelle or I will never reach. But you're going to reach them. You're going to reach them. Do you believe it? Lift your hands to the Lord. Stretch your hands toward her. Father, what you've given me, give it to her. Make her an evangelist. Make her an evangelist. Make her an evangelist. Let her do that work, oh God. And if you don't know what that means, you get with Pastor Sam, and he'll show you, and you'll walk this out. This is your time. This is your time. Lift your hands. Father, anoint her tonight. Father, anoint her tonight. This is your time to do the work of an evangelist. This is your time to say, I'm not going to be fearful. This is your time to say, I'm not going to be fearful. This is your time to say, I'm not going to be fearful. Stretch your hands toward this girl. I'm just telling you, I don't know your name but God said, I'm, I've, I've made you an influence. I've made you an influence, but look at me. It's been quiet. But the Lord said, I've given you a loud mouth, and I've made you loud for the kingdom of God. And you've been loud for other things, but now it's time to get loud for God. Do you hear it? Do you hear it? Lift your hands to God. Come on. Father, anoint her tonight. Anoint her tonight to do the work of the evangelist. Do it. The, the God's calling you. I am nobody, but the Lord is putting you. You feel my hand on your head, but the Lord is placing his hand on your head, and he's saying, no longer silent. No longer silent. I'm touching you with fire. I'm touching you with fire. Stretch your hands toward him, church. Father, every one of these young men, every one of these women of God, every one of them, come here, come here, that God says, no longer in the shadows, no longer in the shadows. The enemy lies to you and says you're not good enough and you don't know enough and you don't have enough and you're not pretty enough and you don't have it. But let me tell you something. You're beautiful and you're talented and you're gifted. And he said I, you have everything that he needs. You have a heart that he says I'm going to use. I'm going to use. Come on, stretch your hands to order, church. And God's going to use you, woman of God. God's going to use you, woman of God. And it's time to become the terrorist. It's time to become the terrorist. It's time to become the terrorist in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Would you give every one of these a standing ovation? Come on, you can clap louder than that. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come here. Come here. I love this boy right here. Come on, somebody. I love this kid. Come on. I love you. Stretch your hands toward him. Father, anoint this precious boy. God, use him for your kingdom. God, let your hand be on him tonight. And what you've given me, God, give it to this precious boy. And use him for your kingdom, Jesus. Use him for your kingdom. Come on, church. Stretch your hands toward him. Anoint him, God. Anoint him, God. And use his precious heart in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. He's sweating as much as I am. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout for this boy. Come on. I want you to step back down. I want you to step back down. No, wait, 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 before you go. Get baptized in water. Even if you've done it before, obviously it didn't work the first time. Do it again. Follow the Lord in water baptism. Go home and clean your house out. If there's drugs or alcohol or pornography or things that God's not pleased with, burn it, trash it, flush it. Demons are attached to it. It'll hurt you. Get rid of it and let God help you. And third thing is stay with your pastors and say, I'm going to be the terrorist. I'm going to be the terrorist. I'm going to be the terrorist. Do you believe it? It's time. It's time. God is watching. And God is listening. And he says, do you mean it? Then this is the time. Come on, somebody shout for him one more time. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can step down. Step down. Let me let you step down. Hallelujah. I want you to get in circles right where you are of about five people. Just get in a circle. All the way to the back. Get in a circle of about five people. And pastor's coming in just a moment because we're in trouble. Get about five people. Get in a circle. Come on, just get in a circle right there. Put one in the middle of your circle right now. Come on, the rest of you, lay hands on them and say, God, touch them with fire. Just go ahead. Doesn't matter which one. Somebody get in the circle. The rest of you, lay your hand on them. Just move one. Move somebody in the circle. The rest of you, lay your hands on them and say, God, touch them with fire. God, touch them with fire. Make them a terrorist. Make them a terrorist. 
Make him a kingdom terrorist. Make him a kingdom soul winner. Make him a kingdom soul winner. That God, that they're going to overcome their fear and fire is going to burn in their belly. Fire is going to burn in their belly. Anoint them tonight, God. Anoint them tonight, God. Anoint them tonight, God. In Jesus' name. Move the next person in your circle. Come on, just move the next one. Grab them. Move them in that circle. The rest of you, lay your hands on them and say, God, touch them with fire. God, touch them with fire. God, touch them with fire right now. Touch them with fire, God. Touch them with fire, God. That they're going to be a terrorist. They're going to be a soul winner. We're going to go and win this community to the name of Jesus. Anoint this one today, God. Put your fire on them and use them in the name of Jesus, we pray. Put the next one in your circle. Put the next one in your circle. The rest of you lay your hands on them and say, God, anoint them. God, anoint them. God, anoint them. Put your fire on them. Come on. Put your hands on them and say, God, put your fire on them. Put your fire on them. Empower them. Strengthen them. Use them, oh God. Use them, oh God. Use them, oh God. Make them a terrorist and a soul winner that they're selling out tonight, God, to win souls and win this community to faith in Jesus. Do it tonight, oh God. Do it tonight. Move the next one in your circle. Grab the next one. Move them in your circle. Lay your hands on them right now and say, God, touch them with fire. 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 God, we're asking tonight that you anoint them to be a soul winner. You anoint them to be a Holy Ghost terrorist. You anoint them to be a world changer. That God, that they're going to start right here with their church in their city starting tomorrow in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Grab the next one. Move them in your circle. Grab the next one. Move them in your circle. We want to pray for everybody in this building. Father, anoint them tonight. Touch them with your fire. 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 Let them become a Holy Ghost terrorist. Let them become a Holy Ghost soul winner. Let this be the time that they're going to go and win them. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, anoint them tonight to be a Holy Spirit soul winner. In Jesus' name. Grab the next one, move them in your circle. Grab the next one, move them in your circle. If you're finished, just lift your hands to heaven. Lay the, your hands on the next one. Touch them with fire, God. 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 Father, we're asking in Christiana, Pennsylvania, that your fire will come in this room. Those behind the sound booth, those behind the cameras, those on the platform, those with instruments, those with microphones, Touch us with fire. Let them become a Holy Spirit terrorist. Let them become a Holy Spirit terrorist. And they will push the demons back and your glory will be revealed in Jesus' name. Grab the next one. Move them in your circle. Grab the next one. Move them in there. Say, God, touch them with fire. 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 Lord, we're asking for fire to come on their altar tonight. Make them a Holy Ghost soul winner. Let them become a Holy Spirit terrorist. That, God, they're going to push the demons back and see your glory revealed. And win the harvest in this hour. In Jesus' name, anoint them, empower them. Move the next one in your circle. Move the next one in your circle. Come on. Just grab the next one. Move them in there. Say, Lord, anoint them with fire. Anoint them with fire. Touch them with fire. Touch them with fire. Let them become a terrorist. Let them become a soul winner. Let them push the demons back. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, touch them with fire. Touch them with fire. Let them become that terrorist. We pray in Jesus' name. Lift your hands now all over this room. Come on. Cry out. Cry out. Say, God, I want your fire. 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 In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Look at me. Look at me if you would. Look at me for just a moment. Look here. I I get to win a lot of people to Christ because I ask a lot of people about Jesus. And, and, And it's just hard to say no when you ask them a simple question. Tomorrow we're going to go all over this city and we're going to ask people a question. Of, of what God can do in their life. We need you to be here in the morning. Listen, the demons have had them long enough. Do you hear me? The darkness has had them long enough. It's time for us to go get them. It's time for us to go get them and compel them. Come here, Mariana. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one simple example. Come on, believe. Stretch your hands toward this man of God. I'm telling you, man of God, God brought you here tonight. And what God's given me, he's giving to you. And he's going to use you to win souls in Jesus' name. Come on, you agree with me right now. Come on, everybody say this out loud. Say, Lord Jesus, I have asked for your fire. You said if I ask, it would be given. So I receive your fire. I am a soul winner. I am a Holy Ghost terrorist. I will push the demons back and set the captive free. Demons, you've had them long enough. It's time for us to go and get them. I will join my pastor's vision. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. Release your glory, Lord. Give us souls in Jesus' name. Now lift your hands and say it. Say, I am a soul winner. Come on, let, let the devil hear you say it. Say, I am a soul winner. Come on, shout it again. I am a soul winner. Lord, we ask for that tonight. We believe we receive it tonight in Jesus' name. Look at me. Nobody talks about soul winning anymore. Nobody talks about it. But it's time, Pastor Sam, that we go get the harvest. Be back tomorrow morning. Our Penn State will lose every game they play the rest of this year. We need you here. It's going to be a great time. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on. Come on. I think we can do better than that. How many of you all appreciate Brother Johnny? So grateful for what he has imparted to us tonight. And I just want to encourage you today that fear is gone. Peace is over you. A lot of times we talk about these messages and we're like, oh my gosh, now I have to actually do it. God's peace is upon you. He's anointed you and he has given you exactly what you need to tell people about him. Amen. Come on. How many of you can say Jesus did something in my life? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to celebrate like you mean it as you're heading back to your seat. Don't go anywhere because we're about to celebrate life change. You can go ahead and have a seat. If you're here tonight and you have signed up for baptism, I want you to make your way over here. Stick with me tonight. Y'all, Brother Johnny said it costs you something when you come to church. And we can stay here just a little bit longer and make a holy sacrifice for Jesus. Because here's what we're celebrating tonight, y'all. We're celebrating life change. In just a moment, we're going to celebrate that together. We're going to lift the roof off the house as we give an over-the-top shout, scream, and clap as people go down under that water and come up and celebrate that their life has been changed. I want to give you an opportunity, though. Uh, I am so appreciative of Brother Johnny. He's been doing this for 37 years. Listen, y'all, what is going on in our culture today? The answer is you and I telling people about Jesus. And I'm grateful for Brother Johnny and his boldness standing up and teaching us how to tell people about Jesus. As he mentioned, tomorrow, be here at 8.30 p.m. We're going to train you 9 o'clock a.m. Sorry, you know what I meant. We're going to train you. We're going to have some refreshments. But we're going to go out and put it into practice. But I want to give you all an opportunity before you leave here tonight. On your way out, there will be those offering boxes. Please give towards Johnny's ministry. Everything that you give is going to help him continue to travel and stir people up and make a continuous impact in communities like he's doing here this weekend. Amen. Hey, can I just speak a blessing over him before we transition? Father, I thank you for Brother Johnny. I thank you, Lord, for that fire you placed in him that's gotten upon us. I thank you that it's sealed in us. But I thank you, Lord, that you're meeting his every need. Bless him. I thank you for favor. And I pray, God, for souls that he's never seen. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Well, yeah, you can clap for that. Go ahead and let him know that you appreciate him. Well, I want you all to know we're not just ending this service because that's what we do every uh, freedom evening, every uh, freedom night that we have. It's late, y'all. He preached for like four and a half hours, and it was a great message. I got to see my friend Jason get married. Thank you for not choosing me. Uh, but we're not just doing this to end the service. This is what we do whenever we make a commitment to follow Jesus. We let the world know. Y'all, I'm married. And my life has changed. And I didn't keep it a secret. I got a ring on my finger and I said, I'm married and my life is forever changed. And that is my wife. And I want everybody to know today as these individuals go under that water, that's that public confession. That's that public confession showing the world 
that they are transformed, that they are different. They now belong to Jesus. They might look the same on the outside, but everything is new. And that water baptism is that outward display of that inward commitment. And so we're going to celebrate that together tonight. So if you are here ready to be baptized, the band's going to play behind us. And y'all, we're going to celebrate that life change. Here's what I want you to do as you sit in that seat. Here's what I'm doing. I'm remembering when I was baptized. I'm remembering what Jesus did in me. Come on, everybody, let's stand up and get ready to celebrate together.
shout a praise for Jesus tonight. Come on. Come on, isn't God good? One more time, lift a shout. Come on. Amen. Amen. And amen. So good. Thanks, man. Hey, also, tomorrow morning, 8.30, we're going to be back here. We're going to be going to the local businesses, and we are going to be uh, handing them, like we talked about uh, here tonight, uh, bags of candy and just praying with the local businesses. If you would like to sign up, uh, Jeff Dean's going to be up in the lobby. Please sign up uh, because we're going to be breaking into groups and everything. So that will help us to be able to manage everything better tomorrow. So 8.30 tomorrow morning. Be here. We would love to see you. God bless you guys. Have a great night.